Hey guys, this is Frozen Things Fuse here and welcome back to another video and today I'm going to be doing something that I haven't done in, in a while and that is sharing with you guys my thoughts on movie news, major movie announcements. So I was able to uh, pick up uh, two topics that I think are worth talking about. And I felt like doing this because I, I wasn't sure what video to make and I, I just felt like making a video. Well, besides my those trade reactions, I actually did a while ago, but if you haven't seen them, I highly recommend it. So, if you're wondering what trailers am I, what, no, what uh, movie news that I'm going to be reviewing and what my, what my thoughts on them are, then just keep watching. So, the first movie news I'm going to be talking about is The Marvels. Uh, yep, uh, I'm, if, uh, so if you guys are not aware about uh, the news about The Marvels, there has been a leaked post credit scene for it. A post credit scene that has been leaked. Uh, and this is something that I need to talk about because this is regarding something that I am passionate about. And when I heard this movie news, I was like, whoa, is this actually happening? Are they actually doing this? Wow, OMG. And yeah, so if you, so, uh, if you don't know what this, what this movie news is about regarding the Marvels, Basically, Kate Bishop will show up in the post credit scene. Yep, I am not kidding. Yep, that is actually what I heard. And I'm hoping it actually happens. So, if you guys don't know, I am kind of excited for the Marvels. Mainly because the trailer looked good. But, but although I don't really expect it to be like, you know, on the same quality as some of the other, uh, you know, go to some of the other peak MCU movies. In fact, I did not. I didn't like the first Captain Marvel. I, I'm sure a lot of you guys know that if you know me so well, you know that I do not like the first um, Captain Marvel movie. But uh, and I was originally not excited for the Marvels, but just for the fact that I felt bad for Marvel, just because of how much hate they have, how much toxic hate they have, which is just upsetting. I decided to probably be um, optimistic about the Marvels, and the trailer was actually really good. In fact, it was amazing. I love the trailer. But if uh, if there is anything about this movie, any announcement that actually got me a million times more hyped than I already was, it's the news that Kate Bishop is going to be in this movie, specifically in the post credit scene. I don't know if it's actually gonna happen. I mean, but to be fair, I I remember they announced that Kate Bishop was going to be in Ant Man: The Wasp: Quantum Mania, but she didn't appear. So I hope this time that she'll actually um. Up here. So, basically, the description about the uh, post credit scene: uh, Kamala Khan is uh, going to be uh, talking to Kate Bishop, and uh, and both Kamala and Kate are, are going to be like pitching this idea to uh, create the, the Young Avengers, which basically consists of you know two of them. I guess they're both going to be leaders. Uh, Cassie, which I heard that they're actually going to make a Cassie reference. I don't think she's going to appear in the Marvel's post credit scene. I I think she'll just make make. Make a, they'll just make a reference to her. Um, there will also be America Chavez, um, um, Billy and Tommy, and maybe Cloak and Dagger, but I'm not sure about, about that. But yeah. Um, so yeah, they're going to be forming uh, the new Avengers, and I think the Marvels is going to be a setup to, uh, a setup to um, um, the, um, the Young Avengers because of Kamala Khan's character. It feels like and, and this is a trailer, it seems like Kamala is getting uh, more, more time to shine than, uh, it's gonna shine harder than, uh, than uh, Captain Marvel herself, uh, Carol Danvers, and even Monica too is gonna, and that's kind of why people are excited for the Marvels, because of you know, the other two characters in the team, like overshadowing uh, Carol, um, and that's certainly one of her reasons, uh, but yeah, uh, I'm really excited to see what they do with this, I mean, I wish the Marvel the Marvels would come out this instant just so I can see uh what will happen in the post credit scene. I, I can get to see uh you know um just um come up um no Kate Bishop just showing up. And yeah, um such a great movie news. I'm hoping that it, um it's true though. Um so yeah. And if you guys don't know by now, Kate Bishop is my favorite MCU character, period. And uh, Hawkeye is my favorite um, MCU uh, content period and Kate Bishop is the reason why. Hailey Stifle is my second favorite actress, second only behind the second only to Sadie Sink. And 
Yeah, I love her so much, and I love Kate Bishop. She's my favorite superhero. Well, no, technically Gwen Stacy is my favorite superhero, but but uh, Kate Bishop is close. Kate Bishop is close. Is close. And can you believe that Hilly Stifle played my two favorite uh, superheroes in a uh, film, my like, superhero characters? First, Spider Gwen, and then Kate Bishop. I mean, Hilly Stifle is really on the roll here. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm so excited to see Kate Bishop. Um, but unfortunately though, this news got a lot of people angry about it. Like, like the Marvels is getting even more hate now just because of you know, the, the fact that this movie is going to set up the Young Avengers and Kate Bishop will show up. I'm sorry, but I mean, this is why I'm sick of the Marvel hate. Uh, because it's just uh, so toxic. They just like to whine over everything. Heck, heck Secret Invasion got hated. I, I don't know why, I, I and by the way, if, you, if you're wondering my thoughts on Secret Invasion, I absolutely adored it. It is probably my favorite MCU show since Hong Kai. I think probably second, uh, as of two episodes. I don't, I don't see it topping Hong Kai, but I love Secret Invasion so much. Like, and the fact that people hate Secret Invasion is just absurd. The, I'll talk more about that when I review uh, Secret Invasion, but, but that's pretty much the thing. The MCU hate is just beyond toxic, and I can't stand it. Which is why I decided to become excited for the Marvels because of how toxic the Marvel hate is. And if Kate Bishop is what's making people um, hate on the movie even more, then I don't know. Then I don't know to say. Plus, Kate Bishop is a well received character. People. Now, I know that there are some people who say that she's annoying, like my dad. The, but most people I know like Kate Bishop. And she's actually considered to be the best new character in Phase 4. So, I mean. Hating a movie because of her in it? Really? Yeah, um, yeah, I guess, uh, but to me personally, the Kate Bishop announcement, um, the Kate Bishop announcement, uh, uh, thing is the reason as to why I'm hyped for the Marvels. It got me more hyped for it. And, uh, when I do my top 10 most anticipated uh, movies for the rest of the year, I'm gonna do it, um, for next month. I'm gonna do it, like, for the August to December movies. Expect the Marvels to be in my top 10. Yeah, the Marvels will be in my top 10 most anticipated movies for the rest of the year. List because uh, because of Kate Bishop and just the fact that I'm an MCU fanboy, so I can just like this movie when I want. Do I think it's gonna be the weakest MCU movie of the year? Honestly, yeah. Mainly because I just really love Quantum Mania and Guardians 3 so much, and it's really gonna be hard for the Marvels to top this. And Guardians 3 is my favorite live action movie of all time, by the way. So I don't see how the Marvels in any shape or form could top this, but I hope it's still great. And if the Marvels uh, gets a 9 out of 10 from me, if I rate the Marvels that great thing, then I think 2023 will be the best year for the MCU. But if I rate it lower than a 9 out of 10, maybe not. But it, it's already right up there, especially with two masterpieces that, that, was, uh, uh, that just came out this year from Marvel. Okay, so that's all for my Kate, for, for this announcement about Kate Bishop going to show up in the, in the Marvel's post credit scene. Now, let's get to the topic that you might have gone uh, to this video for. You might have clicked on this video for this topic. And we are talking about Superman Legacy, the final casting for Superman and Lois. And in addition to that, my fan cast for the rest of the supporting cast. So yeah. So if so, you you must have been you must have been living under the rug if you've never heard of uh, this announcement. But James Gunn is making a Superman movie, and he's just casted the uh, Henry Cal. No, he's just casted Superman and Lois Lane. Yep, and uh, yes, um, and so now I'm here, y'all, to tell y'all, give you all my thoughts on these castings, casting choice, whether if I think they work or not. So yeah, let's see what they are. So yeah. My pick for so yeah um my wait please. sorry about that but yeah so the casting choices for Superman and Lois Lane are David Cornswet as Superman and Rachel Brosnahan as Lois Lane. So yeah, let's let me tell you all my thoughts on these ones. First, starting off with um I wanna start with Lois Lane. Uh, because she's Lois Lane, so yeah. Um, now, when I now um, 
there were three candidates um candidates um who were going to be playing uh, Lois Lane. Um Rachel Brosnahan, Emma Mackey, and Phoebe De Nabor. Um so yeah, um I know most people wanted Emma Mackey as Lois Lane. But to me personally, I personally my favorite of the three candidates uh, would have had to be Phoebe Navor. Or uh, probably because she just looks the most gorgeous out of the three. Um and I think she and I would would have loved to see her as Lo as Lois Lane. Um as a uh, Lois Lane. Um and everyone was saying Emma Mackey was going to be Lois Lane, so I thought it was gonna be Emma Mackey. Rachel Brosnahan was actually my least favorite of the three uh candidates for Lois Lane. So when I heard that Rachel Brosnahan was casted as Lois Lane and was the final cast, uh I um I was kind of surprised that it wasn't the other two. Um, it was kind of surprising, but I had I have nothing against uh, Lois uh, Rachel Brosnahan's Lois Lane. I mean, Rachel Brosnahan uh, is a gorgeous actress. Uh, you know, um, I haven't really seen the Marvelous Miss Maisel, but uh, um, but uh, it was um, but I I should be good. I'll definitely watch that um at some point. I remember seeing her in, in House of Cards. I have seen House of Cards. Uh, I remember my dad showed me that show. And at the time, I, and I enjoyed the show, but I didn't really understand the story because I was kind of young. And I, I, I watched that show as a, um, someone who doesn't have an understanding of politics yet. Like, it was a long time ago, so yeah. Uh, and, um, and yeah, but, um, and, oh yeah, and also Rachel Brosnahan was in Spice in the Skies as uh, Walter Beckett's mother. So yeah, um, but however, um, the more I think about it, I think um, Rachel Brosnahan is the perfect Lois Lane. It's gonna be, it's gonna make the perfect, perfect Lois Lane. How though? Um, earlier before I um, started uh, making this video, I saw a video um, about uh, you know. You know, Superman Legacy, you know, um, AI generated uh, David Corinsford and Rachel Brosnahan as their respective roles. And they showed the photos of uh, Rachel Brosnahan as uh, Lois Lane. And looking at her photos, I was like, damn, that is actually Lois Lane right there. That, I think she could be a perfect Lois Lane. Um, yeah, so I was completely sold in that. Uh, plus the fact that Rachel Brosnahan is actually older than... Uh, than um, than David Corns Corns with and uh, Lois Lane is supposed to be older than uh, Clark Kent, especially um in the comics. It, it, it's established that Lois Lane is older than Clark Kent, so um it's really it, it works perfectly to cast someone older than David Corns with. Uh, plus the fact that uh, plus the fact that uh, um Emma Mackey and uh, Phoebe Navor are younger than uh, David Corns with. And speaking of David Corns with. Now let's talk about how what what the casting of him as Superman is like. So yeah, um now before I get to my thoughts on him, I just wanna say um call out the uh, Toxic Snyder fans who are literally bashing James Gunn's movie in his movie just because Henry Cavill got fired. Yeah, I mean it is sad to see Henry Cavill getting fired as Superman, but I mean, I, I feel like the, the blame should be on Warner Bros. themselves, uh, not James Gunn. Uh, I feel like people are just protecting Warner Bros. And, and, and putting the blame on James Gunn just because James Gunn was a Marvel guy and uh, someone who uh, worked at the Marvel. But I don't care what anyone says. So I'm not going to defend the decision to fire Henry Cavill because I love Henry Cavill Superman. He's my favorite Superman and he'll always be my favorite Superman. But... I mean, but I mean, considering that um, Henry Cavill really set the standards high as uh, Superman, uh, just because he's your favorite Superman doesn't mean that David Cornsworth is bad. Uh, and just because you don't think this will tell Man of Steel doesn't mean it's a bad. This doesn't mean you, you'll think Superman Legacy will be a bad movie. And that's exactly uh, my thoughts on the David Cornsworth. He's. I don't think he's as good as Henry Cavill. In my opinion, he's, but I would say that he is a perfect choice for Superman. In fact, everyone, including me, cast fan casted David Corns went as Superman. And I'm really happy that Hollywood actually listened to our fan cast and uh, made the final casting decision exactly what fans fan casted. Uh, 
because you know casting is a casting is important, and you know it's bad when uh, Hollywood would uh, when uh, Hollywood uh, just uh, cast uh, whatever they want, and it's just sad when uh, when the fans uh, have better ca casting uh, ideas than uh, Hollywood themselves. Uh, Hollywood themselves. Um, but um, yeah. Uh, I but David Corey is exactly what we all wanted, and I'm glad they did. The last time that you know um Hollywood ca made the final casting decision uh, towards uh um someone we fan casted like everyone was fan casting. Not me personally because uh, I don't I never really followed the fan cast trend back then. Uh, it was just you know back in August two thousand twenty two when I started that uh, when I started you know um following the fan cast trend. Uh, but I have seen comments about this fan cast, about people that everyone wanted this to happen. The last time Hollywood did that was Hilly Steinfeld as Kate Bishop. Everyone wanted Hilly Steinfeld to be Kate Bishop, and that's what we got. And I just mentioned Kate Bishop, I just talked about Kate Bishop earlier. So yeah, um, David Corey's best. So yeah, uh, and a few things I forgot to mention about uh, Lois Lane, Rachel Bruce Nahan, yeah. Since I compared David Corey's with the Henry Cavill, saying that uh, um, Henry Cavill is like is would still be my favorite Superman, but David Corey's is still a top notch choice. Uh, how is Rachel Brosnahan in comparison to Amy Adams? That's the question. Yeah, I'm like, I actually think she's a better. Uh, I actually think she'll be better than Amy Adams. I mean, I can see her being Lois Lane more. Um, even though I, I love Lois Lane from the, the DCEU, I think she's underrated. I think um, um, Rachel Brosnahan uh, is, is going to work better than Amy Adams, in my personal opinion. And not going to lie, um, Rachel Brosnahan was not even my first choice for Lois Lane. Not even Emma McKee and, uh, and Phoebe Neva were my first choice. My, my, two, my first choice for Lois Lane, um, just let me know who it was, it was actually Natalia Dyer. Um, Yep, um, Natalia Dyer, aka um, Nancy Wheeler. I, I mean, I can like can easily see um, Natalia Dyer as a journalist playing a journalist character, especially with the, uh, is um especially with um you know her not, uh, you know her character Nancy Wheeler in Trinity season four where uh where uh, Nancy was acting like a, a journalist and an investigator, constantly interviewing people and. When I look at when I saw Nancy Wheeler in Trinity season four, I was like, "Hey, that reminds me of uh, that reminds me of uh, you know, um, that reminds me of Lois Lane." I I I got Lois Lane vibes from uh, from Nancy Wheeler in season four, so I thought that um, that casting choice would work. And also, I heard that Cobra Kai's uh, Mary Mouser also auditioned for Lois Lane. She failed to get the role, unfortunately, but like uh, I I did hear the announcement that uh, um. That Mary Mouser, aka Samantha Russo, my favorite Cobra Kai char character, uh, audition for Lois Lane. Um, for Lois Lane, and I was like, ooh, that is, that is amazing. I think uh, Mary Mouser should play Lois Lane, but no, she she failed the audition, so she didn't get accepted uh, as the candidates. Um, I also remember um, Samara Weaving was also a, a candidate for Lois Lane, but to be honest, I didn't see her as Lois Lane. I don't think she would work. Uh, I think Samara Weaving uh, would be better off as a as a, a DC villain like Harley Quinn, um, like Harley Quinn, or just simply someone else, or maybe an MCO villain. Because there's a lot of female villains who Samara Weaving can play. But yeah, Rachel. But even though Rachel um, Rose Nahan wasn't my first choice, I am still happy about this casting choice and. And I'm uh, I am happy about David Corey's but as a uh, Superman especially. Now as for the other characters, uh, they're I heard they're gonna be casting next Lex Luthor next, and there were actually two candidates on who were who was gonna play Lex Luthor. Uh, um, if one of the two Scars guards, uh, either Alexander Scars guard or Bill Scars guard. Honestly, eh, I don't think I don't really want them as as Lex Luthor. They would be good, don't get me wrong, but uh, um, I think they, they both would have be better roles uh, to play the DC. Like, Alexander Skarsgård should play Krem, the villain in, uh, who's going to be the villain in Supergirl Woman Tomorrow, my most anticipated uh, James Gunn DCU project. Uh, and uh, Bill Skarsgård should play Clayface in Matt Reeves' The Batman Part 2. Um, so yeah. 
But let's see what other characters, which other characters uh, will be fine. Well, no, what, which other actors will be in this movie. So, my personal choice for the next loser would have to be Nicholas Holt. Um, at first, I was thinking James McAvoy as uh, Lex Luthor, but when I heard that uh, Nicholas Holt was front runner for Lex Luthor, was one of them. I was like, ooh, I think I was like, ooh, I think he would be a perfect. Uh, he would be a perfect uh, Lex Luthor. I think he, he should work, and he'll be, and for sure he'll be way better than Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor. Ugh. But as for the others, um, I'll make it quick because I have to go out. I still need to edit this, upload, and then go out. I'm going somewhere, like, to a hotel, like, for a staycation and my aunt's birthday party. So, yeah, I'll make this quick. So, yeah, Nicholas Holt as Lex Luthor. Um, I want um, Isabella Merced as Nastalia Luthor, who is uh, Lex Luthor's uh, teenage niece. Um, and uh, Chuck Woody Woji, aka Hi who played High Evolutionary Guardian 3 as Brainiac. Um, and Paul Clement Thief as Mercy Graves, uh, you all know her as Mantis. Uh, Bradley Cooper as Crypto, um, Lana Liberato as Lana Lang, uh, Elizabeth Shue as Martha Kent, Tom Hanks as Jonathan Kent, um, Jacob Bertrand as Jimmy Olsen, Hayden Panettiere as Cat Grant, and Bruce Campbell as Perry White. Yep, those are pretty much the ones that I want. And, um, and also, if you guys don't know, James Gunn wanted the uh, Guardians character, the cast from Guardians, to be in, in this DC universe to play certain characters. I think um, it's most likely going to be Bomb Cl uh, Clement D F uh, in this, uh, as she's the one in the talks to play this, to play a role in Superman Legacy. And I can perfectly see her as Mercy Graves, uh, um, especially when uh, when I think she's going to play a uh, Mercy Graves like character in uh, Mission Impossible: Dead Reckoning Part One. Yeah. Based on the trailers, um, yeah, uh, rewatching the trailers, I actually noticed that she was she's actually going to be the villain. I didn't realize that she's going to be one of the villains slash henchmen, and she looks like a Mercy Graves that type of uh, henchman. So I think she'll be perfect as Mercy Graves. And Bradley Cooper and Chuck Woody would you cause why not? I'm not sure if Bradley Cooper will exactly play Crypto. I only casting him just because of Rocket, aka my favorite male character in film. But we'll, we'll see about that. So also for my um, movie news, uh, uh, my thoughts on, on these two movie news. So uh, what is your opinion on these movie news? And which one of these two do you like better? Uh, Haley Steinfeld uh, as Kate Bishop being in uh, um, rumor to appear in the Marvel's post credit scene or the casting for Superman Legacy? Comment down below, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and stay tuned for my review of uh, the new Netflix film, Nemona. So yeah, bye guys.